hey guys welcome back to my channel it is time for another true crime video yet again and today we will be talking about the murder of april tinsley a case that finally came to a close after 30 years April Marie Tinsley was born on March 18, 1980 in Fort Wayne, Indiana. She was described to be kind, sweet, loving, and a lot of fun. She was part of the Children's Choir at her church, the Faith United Methodist Church, and was a first grader at Fairfield Elementary School. On April 1, 1988, April got home from school quite early, earlier than usual. She had lunch with her mother, Janet, before asking if she could come over to her friend Nicole's house. Janet said yes, but told April to be back before 4 p.m. as it looked like it was going to rain that day. Now, April promised her mom that she will be back before 4 and went on her way. When she arrived at Nicole's house, she called her mother to inform her that she had arrived there safely before heading to the playground with her friend. Nicole and April spent a few good hours on this playground before deciding to part ways, and this was at around 3.30 p.m. Nicole was headed to another friend's house, and April realized that she had actually forgotten her umbrella at Nicole's house. So she told her friend to just go and she could come back for her umbrella on her own. Now, at 4 p.m., April was still not home. And this was very out of character for her. She never disobeyed her mother and was always a good and responsible kid despite her young age. In Janet's mind, it was possible that maybe April just bumped into a few friends and started talking or playing with someone else on her way home, or she simply was having too much fun to take notice of the time. However, Janet just had this gut feeling and she was starting to worry, so she decided to call Nicole's mom and ask if April was still there. And to her horror, she wasn't. According to Nicole's mother, the two went to the playground and April was supposed to pick up her umbrella from their house but never made it there. Janet's stomach dropped. This was not far away from their house at all and there would be no other reason for April not to be home yet. And just a side note, I'm not hating on Nicole's mom, but if you knew that an 8-year-old girl was supposed to drop by your home but never made it, shouldn't you at least get in contact with her parents or her mother to alert them? I mean, it's just a thought, but anyway, Janet and a few neighbors then started to search the area, but to no avail. And by 6 p.m., April Tinsley was reported as missing. Now, for some reason, the police only did something three days after. 25 police officers from the local police unit joined a search party with over 50 volunteers from the community. And sadly, April's lifeless body would be found that day. A man who was out for a jog spotted the little girl dumped on a ditch on the side of the road. This was a wooded area but she wasn't placed that far away from the street and was seen right away. This man called the authorities and upon seeing the little girl's face and the clothes, this was confirmed to be 8-year-old April Tinsley. She was brought in for a post-mortem examination and her cause of death was determined to be asphyxiation due to manual strangulation. And sadly, it was also confirmed that although April was found fully clothed aside from one shoe, April had been sexually assaulted by her kidnapper as well. On April 5th, a witness came in saying that they had seen a blue pickup truck driving slowly around the area where April's body had been discovered. And according to this witness, they had seen a blonde-haired little girl matching April's description walking on the side of the road when this blue pickup truck pulled over. 
and it didn't seem like April was in danger or didn't seem like she was scared. So the witness did not really do anything at the time because it looked normal, just like a dad picking up his daughter. This man was described to be a white male in his 30s who was around 150 pounds with sandy or blonde hair. On April 8th, a memorial service attended by hundreds of mourners was held for April. And after this, the search for her killer continued. Now, as I have mentioned, April was found with all of her clothes on except for one of her shoes, which was later found discarded around 800 feet away from where her body was discovered. And the law enforcement sees this as the killer dumping April's body in the ditch, driving off, then realizing that one of her shoes was still inside the vehicle, and the perpetrator simply threw it out of the window. Now, authorities also believe that whoever did this was from the area or was at least quite familiar with it because that side of the town was quite secluded and only someone who knew the place well would know where to dump April without getting caught. Calls and tips started flooding in telling the cops to look into a certain gang member named Moose who was also rumored to be part of a satanic cult. Coincidentally, this man also owned a blue pickup truck and was a known creep in the community. Basically, people in the area knew him as someone who would bother kids at the playground. And at the time, he became the prime suspect of this case. However, after passing numerous polygraph tests and having no physical evidence linking him to the crime, Nothing much came from this lead or any other lead, sadly, and this became a cold case for 30 years. However, two years after April Tinsley was killed, on May 1990, a barn owner called the authorities to report vandalism. Someone apparently broke into his property in the middle of the night and wrote, I killed 8-year-old April Marie Tinsley. Did you find her other shoe? Ha ha. I will kill again on his barn door. Crayons were found around the same area, but there were no fingerprints found or any other type of DNA. So this was also a dead end. Now fast forward to 2004, when a few little girls started receiving gifts from someone claiming to be April's murderer yet again. These were Ziploc bags that contained notes written on a yellow piece of paper saying something along the lines of, Hi honey, I've been watching you. I am the same person that kidnapped, raped, and killed April Tinsley. You are my next victim. And with these notes came used condoms containing the sender's DNA. And these DNA samples matched the one found on April all the way back in 1988. However, upon running these on the National DNA Database, no match was found. I mean, these were samples from 1988 and 2004. And back then, technology was not as advanced as it is today. And if they didn't have anyone to match it on the database, Nothing could really be done back then. However, as we all know, technology has gotten really far, especially this past few years. And if you are a true crime fanatic, I am pretty sure that you've heard of DNA genealogy and ancestry databases online. Basically, someone related to the perpetrator submitted his or her DNA sample to one of these ancestry websites and this is how authorities and genealogists were finally able to narrow down their search. One of the possible and most probable suspects was a 59-year-old man named John D. Miller, also from Indiana. Investigators followed him for a while before finally obtaining some of his trash with DNA on it. And this trash was a used and discarded condom. And finally, a match was found. On July 15, 2018, law enforcement brought John D. Miller in for questioning. 
and upon asking him if he knew what this was about, he immediately said, April Tinsley. This man was described by his neighbors to be secluded, scary, and always angry for no reason. Now, despite DNA evidence confirming that he was the one who did all of these horrid things to April and was also the guy responsible for sending those notes and used condoms to other little girls, John Miller still actually had the audacity to plead not guilty and deny any involvement. However, on his next trial, he changed his plea to guilty. John D. Miller was sentenced to 80 years in prison for the abduction, rape, and murder of 8-year-old April Marie Tinsley. His earliest possible date of release will be on July 15, 2058, when he is 98 years old. And I'm guessing that he would never see the light of day again. Not, not unless he lives past 98. And that is all the information that I have on this case. As usual, I would love to hear your thoughts on this. And should there be any other case that you would like for me to cover, please let me know by leaving a comment. Thank you so much for tuning in and I will see you guys on my next video.